Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council Meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council Meetings, City Committee Meetings, Meeting Agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. NENA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback. Welcome to the 55th State Assembly District Republican Party Candidates Forum, presented by the League of Women Voters of Winnebago County. The candidates to my left are Lori Asbury, Rachel Cabral, Galvera, and Jay Schroeder. 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 Schroeder, okay. Thank you. Questions were solicited by print and social media and were screened by members of the League of Women Voters. Opening statements are three minutes, two minutes for answering questions, and two minutes for closing statements. A drawing was done by the candidates for position, and Lori Asbury will start first. Because of the challenging circumstances of COVID-19, there will not be an audience. The forum will be taped and be available on YouTube. Thanks to Dan Kalpinski, UWO Fox Cities, for the recording of this event. The City of Nina will either schedule a broadcast or arrange a separate time for Spectrum. At this time, we do not have the dates. So we are going to first start with all right, hi, thank you so much to the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this event. Uh, it gives us a great way to let the voters know more about us. I'm Lori Asbury and I um, am running because I want to continue to build our communities. I wanna move our families, communities and small business forward. I'm a two-term Board of Education uh, member. I'm also the treasurer and the legislative committee chair. I oversee a 90 plus million dollar budget. I've eliminated a $100 million uh, basic liability. We have the lowest mill rate in the area. So I'm a fiscal conservative and I understand how to maintain a budget and be very respectful of our taxpayers. I also understand education, being on the Board of Education. Uh, we prepare our students for career and college. We require our students to take a post-secondary credit yielding class. And what that means is that we give them credits. So should they decide to go on to technical college or college, they've got credit under their belt, which means they're gonna be there a shorter amount of time. They're gonna reduce their cost. They're gonna also be well prepared for what they're gonna encounter at career college. And we also prepare them to go right into the workforce. We do internships, we do real world experience, and we have relationships with our businesses so our kids can, if they choose to, enter the, the you know a career right out of, of high school. I also understand the, re, the uh, reducing the cost of health care. As a board member, I supported creating a in-house clinic for our staff. We also are proud to say that I have uh, HSA or health savings accounts for our employees. We also have a wellness program. Uh, and, and all of these gives us a savings of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I understand transparency and I understand how to reduce cost. I'm a 20 year active community volunteer. I'm on the board of Samaritan Counseling, just like Mike was. I also volunteer regularly at St. Joseph's Food Pantry. I'm a long-term community volunteer, and I plan to listen, learn, and lead our community. Thank you. 
Rachel? Thank you. Rachel Cabral Guevara. I go by Rachel. Um, I'm very excited to be here today. So thank you for the opportunity. I am new to the world of politics. A lot of folks do not know who I am, except for my patients and my students. So I've really been out in the community working hard. Um, new to the world of politics and the fact that I haven't ran for seats before. New to the world of politics that I haven't been on the school board before. New to the world of politics that I haven't worked in DC as a lobbyist before. Lots of news, news, news. What I am, though, is I'm a small business owner. I own a clinic in Fox Crossing called Nurse Practitioner Health Services. We're a clinic that doesn't take insurance. We're a clinic that works with small business owners. We're a clinic that works with their employees, with citizens that don't have insurance, people that have high deductibles, people that are struggling with health care in our state. I'm an instructor at UW Oshkosh. I'm working with students on a regular basis, helping them get to the front line. I do teach in the College of Nursing, so when I speak of the front line, talking about the healthcare front line. My students are out there working with COVID today. Many of them have graduated and come back and are sharing their stories with me that we can meet on a common level because I'm also working with this in my clinic, cur uh, my clinic currently. Um, one thing that I have really done hard to prove to many of the people that have endorsed me is that I'm a hard worker. Although I have not been in the world of politics, I live the small business. I live the mom with four kids. I live the instructor role. And so I feel that brings a lot of real life experience that maybe some of the other folks up here have not experienced. I've gotten endorsements from the Wisconsin Nursing Association, which I'm very proud of. I've gotten endorsements from state assembly state representatives such as Gay Manafici. I have gotten endorsements from Lynn Murphy, as well as Deb Rorkas, which I'm very, very proud of, as well as from Ed Perkins, who is the head of the Fox Valley Initiative. So for these folks to have not known me before and to come out and to say, hey, we're supporting you, makes me feel very proud that they know what a hard worker I am, that I listen, that I take action, and that they see good things in the future. Thank you very much for having me come. Jay? Thank you. My name is Jay Schrader, and I really uh, appreciate you inviting me into your home tonight. In my opinion, this race started April 24th. You say, what's that? That's when there was a rally in Madison, a freedom rally. I spoke there. I was the only one speaking on this uh, candidate list here because I believed our rights were being taken away, our freedom of worship, our freedom of speech. Businesses were being locked up. I spoke there. There was 5,000 people there on the Capitol. I spoke because it's freedom. Now, after that, I got, was contacted by one of the attorneys that's filed a federal lawsuit against Tony Evers to stop that from happening again. Now, if you want somebody that's going to do action, it's me. I'm not going to run around putting up a lot of yard signs, sending out a flyer, I'm for apple pie. That's easy. It's putting your name on a, a plaintiff. I've also gotten some bad feedback from it, but that's the way it is. Uh, I, I do it out of principle. I don't need this job. I really don't want it. But Madison is so broken that it ha I, I has motivated me to run. We have on their street there defund police, which Governor Evers must have supported. He didn't stop it. We have rioters. They tear down the forward statue. He had a rapid response of the state patrol or um, National Guard he could have ordered in. He didn't. The state Senate president says he has a felon in his office. He's a co-conspirator or a felony. He's covering it up. Those are the things of why I'm involved in that. And it's serious business what's going on. Uh, the one thing I'd like to thank is the last time I ran in a primary in Winnebago County, I received 6,948 votes. My primary opponent, 2448. In Outagamie County, I got 9,000 votes. My opponent got 3,600 votes. Uh, those are important things, and they show. Uh, we got a list of uh, voters for uh, Republican Assembly Campaign Committee. That's the list we contact people. I'm the only one that's rated a conservative in there. Lori Asbury is rated a swing voter. You know what that means? She votes for Democrats and Republicans. My other opponent wasn't rated at all, which means you vote less than half the time. Those are important issues and what they stand for. But I was the only one rated a conservative. 
it's important we do these things. We stand up for principle. It's not the money. Uh, what are we going to do now? We had an $800 million in revenue shortage. I don't hear anything of solutions. You know what we have to do, first of all? Freeze the next state budget. All these municipalities, cities got to be saying, hey, there's a thing coming down. You got to prepare for it. And I'm not like my opponent who voted for $318 million in new spending and sex education for young children. That is not a conservative Republican principle. Thank you. The first question goes to Rachel. What will you work toward as an assembly re representative? Tax reform, individual rights, business rights, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, health care, et cetera? Um, so I have three biggest, my, big, my three biggest platforms are number one going to be health care. I live health care. I live affordable health care. I've looked at different models to provide health care to our state that have worked. I have data that supports that these models work. Um, affordability, transparency, what I've been doing for the last six years within health care. Um, the next one would be student outcomes. I'm instructor at UW Oshkosh. My students do wonderful, but I also ask is there ways to raise, raise these student outcomes so that they continue to excel and maybe even further. And then lastly, as a small business, business owner, I'm taxed and taxed and taxed. And I say, is, is there a way, can we assess other ways to review how our money is being spent? Um, are there ways to do tax cuts? Are there opportunities for freezes? Where do we need to go when it comes to taxes and the ability to lower them? Okay, need the question repeated? Sure, because the reason you, what you're going to say, uh, I'll dovetail in perfectly. What will you work toward as an assembly representative? Tax reform, individual rights, business rights, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, health care, et cetera. I'm doing most of those right now by being the plaintiff in the federal lawsuit, putting my name on it. Uh, for, as far as fiscally, like I had said in my opening, we have to freeze the upcoming fiscal year, 2021. That will go a long way. It's a start. But like I said, all the municipalities have to be saying, hey, there's a shortage coming. Start preparing. Right now, it's just like nothing's being said. So those are the things. I'm already doing that. And I will continue to do it in the legislature. And by the in the legislature, I'll put amendments to force these things to be done. A lot of them don't do that. They go out, oh, I'm for this, I'm for that. But the key is you put an amendment on a bill or on a budget get it done, to force a vote, public votes. That's how you, you put the spotlight on it. There's an old saying, government is like mold. It grows good in the dark. Thanks. Lori? Well, basically, uh, I have a three-plank platform. I am all about education. I am all about uh, health care affordability, uh, transparency. And I have a proven record with reducing health care costs. We hire people like my opponent. I'm also a coalition builder. Um, we have worked with the community, and we have made an uh, investment into education that is going to help Nina prosper. It's going to be a high-quality education for our kids in the future. And I am very committed to making sure that our students come out well-prepared, either college career or technical college ready, and they can join the workforce. It's all about workforce development. It's all about being fiscally responsible, which I have also proved that I can do. When we're coming up on the budget, we're going to have to make some really difficult decisions. And I have been in a place like that before. I can make those decisions on behalf of our uh, district. I will fight for things for our district that my community feels is uh, important, just like we did when we were making the investment into education here in Nina. I'm proud that I also do not pander to small interests. I am endorsed by the voters, as I have been elected twice, and that is what I listen to when I will be working in Madison on our behalf. Okay, you start, 
Do you support term limits for all elected officials? That's question one. Would you be willing to offer a binding resolution or referendum allowing voters to express their wishes regarding term limits? Yes and yes. Term limits, you know, the presidential term is eight years. Uh, you should probably have two for the state Senate, but eight years is enough. I don't care what party it is, they get stale. And if you know or the presidency uh, or if someone gets elected to office, both parties, when they're first in their first term, gangbusters, let's go do this X, Y, Z, the longer they're in, the less you see they do. And the more they want to build their pension and the more they want to get notoriety. So you got to be hungry, you got to have term limits, and that keeps the democracy flowing. George Washington believed in it, our founding father. Thank you. Hey, Lori? As far as term limits go, I would definitely be open to looking at something as far as binding uh, resolutions. I think that should be uh, something that is a bipartisan effort. Where we have a coalition to talk about it. There are definitely some benefits that I could see to term limits. And it's something that I would be open to for discussion further. Uh, I know several politicians have run on the drain the swamp type of a, a environment, and I understand that. It is something where uh, our democracy needs to take a look at because uh, you know, career politicians aren't necessarily the best for all of us, and I would be very open to taking that. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> So in regards to term limits, um, is there something to be said for the voters that vote for these folks? Okay. Um, I am definitely open. There are pros and cons to term limits. Um, I'm open to exploring the pros and the cons, reassessing it a little bit further. But I do have to say when a voter votes and their, their vote is placed, that, that in an essence is the term limit of course. Voted for. So am I sticking to it 100% and saying, no, I'm not open to term limits. No, but the voter is that voice is very important to be. But I am open to looking at the pros and the cons. Okay, Lori, it is most distressing to witness the state legislature fail to work together and compromise on important issues for the betterment of Wisconsin citizens. If elected, what would you do to work cooperatively with the other party? Good question, and it's a very difficult time in politics right now. I feel like there have been lines drawn in the sand, uh, and it's something that we need to kind of pull back on that type of rhetoric. Um, my proven record being on the school board is I'm a coalition builder. I work across the aisle on certain votes. Uh, we have had, you know, bipartisan votes happening in our school even though it's a nonpartisan position, there are definitely conservatives and liberals. My feeling is that you must work with each other. It's not about the office. It's not about self-gain. It's about the people. It's about working together for the common good. I certainly believe in that. For over 20 years, I've been a community volunteer and supported our school district. I've been with the uh, Nina Menasha Emergency Society. I understand mental health and the importance of it. And I work together with these organizations to make our community better. In Madison, I would definitely reach across the aisle. I would be a coalition builder and I would try to have bipartisan efforts whenever possible. It is most distressing to witness the state legislature fail to work together and compromise on important issues for the betterment of Wisconsin citizens. If elected, what would you do to work cooperatively with the other party? Gotcha. So this goes back to my world of nursing and my education and my connections. With people. Um, in nursing, one of the biggest things that you can do is listen. Listen. What are people saying? What are people's concerns? doesn't matter what side you are. What are people saying? Um, in nursing, we work off of facts. We don't work off of emotion. That's our baseline foundation of nursing. Listen, work off of facts, not off of emotions. Uh, 
2020 is the year of the nurse. It's the most trusted profession. The things that people have shared with me in the community, the things that my patients share with me, the things my students share with me, the things that the community as a whole shares with me, I feel there's a connection just based on the fact that I am a nurse. We work off of an acronym in nursing called ADPI. What ADPI starts for, stands for is number one, assess. You listen to people, you gather data, you assess. Next, what we do is we decide what is that problem? What is the core issue? We come up with a plan, we implement that plan, and then we come back and evaluate it. That's the core of nursing. My students would be really proud of me by just bringing that up, by the way. I'm gonna show this in class. Um, but it doesn't just pertain to nursing, it can pertain to anything. And I plan on utilizing that down in Madison, across the board, um, and with the people in my district and the state, as I do already in my clinic, with my students, and with the folks that I'm meeting currently as I knock doors and go to events such as. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, to work with the other party, you probably would have had to have deal with a party that was 40 years ago of the Democrats. What they've become now is more socialist or, as some say, leaning to the communist. Uh, one of the reasons I got in the race, sadly, is one of my opponents said they wanted to work with Gordon Hintz. He's the assembly minority leader. He was found guilty in a sexting operation. And he threatened to say, you're effing dead, the assembly speaker's wife, right during a session. I won't work with people like that. They are unworkable. He is the assembly minority leader. Those are all facts. Now, to work with someone that wants to work for the betterment of Wisconsin, absolutely. But they are getting less and less and less of the Democrat Party. And we have to stand up. Uh, I don't see any of those Democrats criticizing defund police, uh, the rioters. The only time it happened is when Senator Carpenter got attacked. Then the Democrats woke up. But otherwise, they kind of just like, let it go. No, there's no letting go. Like, I talked to the mayor of Nina tonight. He says, if they try to do anything like that with the statues in town here, they're going to have a different response. Now, that's the way it should be. But to have anything else, uh, I'll work for, with them for the betterment of Wisconsin, for the betterment of, of, of the people of the state. But when it's against Wisconsin, when it's against the people, I'll be their biggest adversary. But I, I look to work with, but I won't accept that uh, any of their shenanigans, to put it lightly. Light of that? that yes, you can. Um, so what is being brought up here is a comment that I had made regarding a bill that Gordon Hintz was working on to decrease prescription costs across our state um, and looking at some other alternatives. Hey, nobody's perfect, but I am willing to work across the across anywhere to bring down costs in health care. I've been doing it for six years. I had patients in my clinic today struggling with health care costs, with prescriptions. I had patients today I didn't even charge because I knew they couldn't you know, afford their prescriptions. And if I have to work across the board with somebody that might not have the best history, I have absolutely no problem with that because I see our community struggling. And these folks here can talk all they want about transparency and health care and blah, 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 but I'm living it every single day. So if I'm going to work with Gordon Hans to get prescription costs down and somebody has an issue with that, then you need to reevaluate. Thank you. I'd like to respond. Um, there's only one rebuttal. Thank you. And that was against your initial answer. Um, just for plain of, uh, for this, the fact is we can rebut for one minute, but only one adversarial rebuttal. Okay. And they're unlimited. So we thought that you only got one, one minute. If you have time left on your response, say you have two minute response and you have time left, you can use the time left to rebut and not have another rebuttal. Thank you. Okay. Does that she, make that clear? It. She, there's just one rebuttal per person. That's what I want no, to clear up. No, it, it's unlimited, but if you okay. want to have a rebuttal, you certainly can. Thanks. I just Okay. That would be at the end. All right. Um, so the next question will go to Rachel. 
And um, will you support any laws that generally raise taxes on the entire state population? I am. I am for lowering taxes. I am for lowering taxes. I know how it has impacted me for my property taxes. I know how it's impacted my family. I know how it's impacted the seniors in this community. I know how it's impacted my patients. Um, I am not for increasing taxes. I'm for lowering taxes. Okay. Uh, it was mentioned with health care. Well, my wife is a physician, and I have two daughters studying to be nurses, so I'm well aware of the, the medical industry. I really don't need a lecture about that. Now, regarding um, taxes, the state of Wisconsin has the fourth highest tax rate in the nation. That tells me no new taxes. I will never vote for those until we're in the bottom quartile, which means we have to be like the 26th. Right now, it's outrageously high. So you, this, this guy is the no guy for the citizen and the taxpayer out there and the people working their butt off and giving up too much of their money to taxes when I look at all the other states in the nation. One of the things we have to restructure our tax system to have it more geared towards sales tax. Uh, right now, the system we have is not good, and it needs to be changed. So that no new taxes, as long as I'm in my term limit at position of six years. Uh, that's important. Uh, you can't have this wishy-washy stuff. If you, uh, you want to vote wishy-washy, I'm not your candidate. I'm not going to, I'm going to take stands and I'm going to fight for the taxpayers and I'm going to fight for what our country and our state was founded on. I have four children, all attended college. My wife attended college. I have a business degree. Uh, I ran a mortgage company. There was reference that there was a person was the only one. That's not true. Uh, I worked at a finance company, had a million, multi-million dollar budgets. I've dealt in money and I know and I look at the state budget, and it's bloated. It's $64 billion. Give me a break. It's too high. Thank you. Lori? Uh, the taxes are an important question. And unfortunately, we are in a position due to COVID shutdown that we are going to have to take a real hard look at our budget. I would totally advocate that this is the time when we look for extra spending, fraud, misuse of funds, any kind of inefficiencies whatsoever, and that's where we start. I would sincerely hope that we don't have to look toward raising taxes, and I would not be in favor of voting to raise taxes. However, there is a harsh reality coming to us. When we get to the end of this COVID, because our economy has been shut down, because our sales and uh, income taxes have not been coming in to feed the state coffers. I certainly appreciate hardworking Wisconsinites, and I absolutely want to be respectful and of their money, their hard-earned money, and they should keep as much of it as they possibly can. However, we're going to have to take a hard look at our budget, and that may include some changes. I also feel like we do need to overhaul our system, and this might also be a good time to look at it. We should be looking at regional areas when we're talking about our sales tax and maybe dividing things up as opposed to having municipalities fight for the limited amount of dollars. So thank you very much. Okay. New question for Jay. How do you envision representing the unique challenges facing communities of color slash immigrants in northeastern Wisconsin? How would you create a platform for their voices to be heard? The best thing you can do for any individual that has God-given talent is providing a basis for them to go to ed college. Clarence Thomas is on the U.S. Supreme Court. He had a sister. She was kind of in uh, more squalor a uh, lot of her entire life. If you ever listen to his story, he's one of my heroes. He worked very, very 
very hard. The best dignity for someone African American, um, Mexican, Latino, uh, Asian is a job. It gives them dignity. They make money. So it's training them. That is the best thing you can do for anyone. It's it's and that is colorless. Like my mother used to teach me, you got your skin. Look beneath it. Just blood there. So you got to look beyond the skin. That's what matters. Thank you. Lori? I feel like solving these type of issues, uh, education will play an absolutely key role. Um, it will be listening, learning, understanding, and collaboration. Um, we basically need to eliminate or work towards eliminating racial and economic disparity, really the question. And we can do that through access to very high quality primary, secondary, and post-secondary education. We can also work very hard on our workforce development. We can leverage our UW system, which is absolutely fantastic, as well as the jewel of the tech college that we have right here in our community. Um, and we can do a lot to change things. We can level the playing field. And if we allow people to work hard and to be a part of our community and get a high quality education, that will go a long way towards changing that situation. Rachel? the question how do you envision representing the unique challenges facing communities of color slash immigrants in northeastern Wisconsin how would you create a platform for their voices to be heard um, so I'm already hearing their voices as a nurse practitioner I have many patients of many different ethnic groups I've had the opportunity for the last three, possibly four years, to be a nurse practitioner at migrant camps. So I've gone all over this state and worked with different ethnic groups. Um, and across the board, some of the things that I hear is, number one, education. If you can provide a strong education in a school of their choice, and they have that foundation, then you can also look at further opportunities in the future for growth. May that be for job opportunities, May that be for mentoring opportunities. Um, overall, when I speak with my families and their children, they speak over and over again about the importance of the foundation of education. And so for me personally, education, continue on opening up our economy, making sure that there's jobs available across the board, and then mentoring programs if need be. But I've, I've had the opportunity for many, many years now to work with all sorts of diverse groups, um, including my, my children. My children are half Hispanic. Um, I am divorced, but my ex-husband is also Hispanic. And I have seen um, his challenges that he had in his childhood. So education was the key for his foundation, as well as our families. And that's where I stand on that one, education. Lori, given that medical care is prohibitively expensive, what is your plan to get Medicare for All implemented in Wisconsin? Basically, we have a, a very strong health care platform. I'm also, um, my husband is a physician. I've been in the business with him for a, a long time. Um, and with the school district, we have had as I said, a lot of great experience reducing health care costs. As far as the expansion, if I'm understanding correctly, of uh, that type of uh, a program, uh, Wisconsin chose not to do expansion across the board for, for that because what we were worried about is if we went down that road, we would be left trying to support after the federal government pulled out the money that we had originally started the program with. 
So instead, what we've chosen to do is to rely on our very strong programs that are within the state, including Badger Care. And we have also wanted to make sure that uh, Medicare uh, reimbursement rates are good. So when you go to um, long-term care facilities and things like that, uh, we are taking care of that those people and the staff were able to, to provide a great health care experience for them at a good cost. Rachel? I'm going to ask you to read the question again. Okay. Me. Each time, read the question for me. Thank you. <laughs> Given that medical care is prohibitively expensive, what is your plan to get Medicare for All implemented in Wisconsin? I like to say, uh, I like how you propose that question. Yep. <laughs> Touche. Um, I personally am not a supporter of Medicare for All. Uh, in the world that I live right now in my, my clinic, I know there are ways to make health care affordable. I do it, and I can have any patient of mine in here right now supporting the fact that I can make it affordable. Um, so I do not support it. Uh, transparency, very important. What are people being charged for these services? Why isn't it across the board transparent? Um, I call physicians. I call Clinics, I call large scale, large healthcare systems out, saying, "If you're a nonprofit, how come we are not being a little bit more cost effective here for our patients and providing more services?" Um, I don't see a lot of doctors struggling. That's all I can say. Not saying that they should be struggling. They shouldn't be. They have worked hard to get where they are. But when our patients are suffering, and you're telling me that. Um, health care isn't affordable in our state, then what is the true essence of health care nowadays? So I do not support that, and I do think that there are other models that can be approached and ways to approach medicine that are more affordable for our entire state and our country. Okay. Jay? Um, Medicare for all in Wisconsin, Governor Walker was opposed to it. The Republican legislature is opposed to it. Now, why is that? Because the, over time it showed that they did make the right decision. Now, how do we deal with it? Uh, transparency, uh, putting in the cost of hip replacement maybe for each hospital, uh, and then you know distribute that information. But I'll tell you one thing about uh, medicine and a doctor, and my wife being one, I heard a comment here, uh, when, there, when there's a code, my wife has to walk into that hospital room and a split second determine what to do to save the person's life. That's tough business. Life or death. And you have to know everything. You might have just started your shift. You haven't had time to review their chart. So that's a, a big thing. And it's a important. They have one of the best uh, overall views of society. Uh, but we have to do, and you say transparency, but what does that mean? That's a buzzword. You have to have uh, clear things, just like when I get an estimate to rem for construction work on my house, you get bids. So if you have the time for optional surgery, you can contact each one and say, "What's of course, life or death, you don't have that. But there's a lot of optional surgeries that you should do, is and you contact them to get price quotes, really. And then you do that, and they have the same rules and laws and you know follow. That's one of the things. And, and transparency, that's putting it in the practice. On to that or no? One minute. So I guess my, my question or my statement to that is, um, you're right, and, and in no way do I question your wife's education because I'm sure she's a fine woman, and you are right. I've done health care myself. I understand that, that there is a lot to be said for that, and, and I respect that. But I also know that there's a lot of spending within health care because I've lived it for a long time, and I don't know... Too many folks out there that are um, working in healthcare that are taking pay cuts when they see their patients are struggling. The CEOs at the hospital, I don't see them struggling very much. Why are we in healthcare? I'm not seeing people in healthcare anymore because they truly have the, the passion for their patients. I see a lot of people in healthcare because it's giving them nice, beautiful houses on the water. So um, my complete focus and passion in this this whole bit is affordable health care within my state, which I've done for my patients, and I will continue to fight for. I'd also like to respond. Thank you. One minute. 
I guess regarding those comments, uh, transparency is key, uh, but also when you're talking about the providers, actually some of the, the higher level administration at some of our hospitals did take a temporary pay cut in lieu of doing that to their, their staff. They still made millions. Doesn't matter. I mean, uh, Lori has point of the, order. Lori yeah. has the... Yeah, that's... And what I would say is we need to move towards some really great programs that are out there like Novo Health, which does exactly that. You can go in, you have a prescribed uh, option for what you're gonna, your surgery is going to cost. And also things like the co-op that uh, with uh, the Fox Cities Chamber of Commerce has started. So they are working with Network Health and with uh, Robin. And that is the type of health care that we need to provide to keep costs down, be transparent, and it's better for our, our constituents. Hey. I, I had to come. I had 15 seconds left. Okay. Um, one of the things is when somebody's sick in the world, they come to the United States. We don't go to another country. We have the best health care in the world. And when you have the best, it costs. And you got equipment for hospitals. Some of them are millions of dollars for the equipment. So that's the history, and you got to know that that's what goes into it. It's an expensive thing to save lives. All right, Rachel. This is a long question. Okay, give it to me. She's the first uh, one. A recent Marquette <laughs> law. A recent Marquette Law School poll reported that 72% of people in Wisconsin favor nonpartisan redistricting. 51 counties have endorsed fair maps, and 17 counties have passed a referendum regarding fair maps. Do you support a nonpartisan redistricting process? Please explain your answer. Um, when it comes to redistricting, I believe that this has already been, been brought up within our state in the past. Um, I believe that the process that we have in place currently is appropriate, and I'm not even going to go into detail. I do not support it. How would you plan to be responsive to the voters on this issue? It's already been, it's already been decided not already been decided, um, when within our state, if an individual, well, let me say, apologies. Within our state, the redistricting has already been discussed numerous times, and the system that we have already placed in and have utilized has been utilized for both sides, Democratic and Republican, and I'm in with what we have currently. Okay. Um, Jay? Uh, when you say it nonpartisan, it's very interesting because uh, sadly, there is nonpartisan days are so fading away. We have a state elections commission that's supposed to be quote nonpartisan. Any important issue, all the votes are three three. They were supposed to be nonpartisan. Uh, in the real world, we would like that. It doesn't happen. Uh, as Rachel mentioned, the state statutes, and I believe the state Supreme Court is already, if not the U.S., I believe the U.S. Supreme Court has already or made a ruling. Uh, the, the answer I'll give you, is, part of it is I'll give you a nonpartisan answer. When the Democrats are in control of the legislature, they uh, uh, create the same situation that when the Republicans are in control in a legislature in the state of the United States. So that's how it works. Uh, I, it's been decided. It's, um, it's not what maybe we would want, but that's the reality of, of what we have. So uh, you can't change what it's already been decided. Thank you. Hey, Lori. Uh, first of all, I would say that I believe in safe and fair elections. Elections are the cornerstone of our democracy. And if we were to make any changes to something like that, the only way that it could happen would be through some sort of a fair, bipartisan process where everyone is at the table to make those redistricting decisions. That's what I would support. Thank you.
Hey, do you support voice voting or do you support every assemblyman casting their vote by name so that the public has record of each member's vote? When I was, uh, went to college, I was a member of the Menominee City Council. And my proudest thing is I got public comments there so everyone could speak. When I was on the Town of Menasha board, you go in their uh, assembly room, it's got in God we trust there. I, I put, uh, supported that. So uh, when you ask the, that question, uh, it's important that every elected official name should be on a vote. In other words, I'm against voice votes. Voice votes occur late at night when they, won't, when they want to, and I'll be blunt, a Donald Trump blunt, when they want to sneak something through, they'll do a voice vote. You know why? Because then no one's name is on the, the, the sausage that was just passed. So under no circumstance uh, would I support a voice vote. Thank you. Lori? Uh, I would be in favor of having their names as opposed to just a voice vote when you don't know. I, um, being on the school board, one of the things that's been important to me uh, is keeping a record of, of what has happened. It's, it's just good politics. It's good, good business. I would be in favor of having names be shown for votes. Oh, could I say one other thing? Just to interject because I had time. When I was on the city council and I knew it was going to be a sticky issue and I knew the president of the council was just itching to do a voice vote, any member can call roll call. And then if it's second, it forces them. So that's a great thing. Hey, Rachel, do you support voice voting or do you support every assemblyman casting their vote by name so that the public has record of each member's vote? We read the question. <laughs> um, I, I'm all about accountability. Across everything that I do, there is accountability. And so I think that it's very important to be able to track people's votes and a name needs to be placed. What do you stand for? What did you vote for? Where do you stand on that issue? Accountability. Lori, what is the most pressing issue facing Wisconsin in 2020, and what do you propose to be done to address the problem? Really, if you'd asked me this uh, six months ago, it would have been a completely different answer. But with the impact that COVID has had on our economy and our state, uh, we are going to be needing to do some very serious looking at our budgets, at our, um, at our schools. We need to get our schools reopened safely. We need to get our businesses reopened successfully. And we need to uh, be working with our constituents on educating and assisting them through this very difficult time. That would be my priority. And what I would work on is, you know, I have a safer small business tax deduction. We're trying to work with our small businesses to get them up and running. We also, I would like to uh, create an office of business recovery within the WDEDC. So it's a one-stop location where uh, the businesses can get information, tools, and resources they need. And working on the school board, we are working very diligently to be able to bring our kids back to school because the last thing that we want to do is give our, force our parents into making a decision as to whether or not they're going to take care of their kids or they're going to have a job. And I want to very much avoid that. And I guess the last thing that I'd be working on is just we're going to have a mental health crisis, potentially. I'd be working on bringing our communities together. Thank you. What, Rachel, what is the most pressing issue facing Wisconsin in 2020, and what do you propose be done to address the problem? So um, I know you're asking for one, but there are two that I see. The first one is this COVID and the impact that it's had on small businesses such as myself and many others. 
not many others all. Even though these businesses are open, the impact is still so significant. They're open, but still there hasn't been the return in the customers. There hasn't been the return in the patients at the clinic. The resources need to be available for these small businesses because they are going to continue to close. Just because these small businesses are open doesn't mean that this is done with. It is going to be worse before it gets better, in my personal opinion, not only for my business, but for all the small business owners that come to my clinic and share their issues with me. The next big one, I know Lori mentioned potential mental health problems. This is not a potential issue. This is not a potential issue. My patients are coming in with the highest levels of anxiety that I've ever seen, and I've been in healthcare for 13 years. The depression is out of control. I've had numerous patients admitted to hospitals with um, concerns that are psychiatric based. This is an issue that we're dealing with now and it's not getting any better. The more that we're isolating, the more that children are not being brought back into schools, I hope they are. Um, I'm hearing from constituents, I'm hearing from family members with kids with autism. This is an issue that is only gonna be compounded as people are not getting back to work as people are struggling to pay for their medications, as people are watching the news and seeing over and over again, COVID nightmare, COVID nightmare. This is not a potential issue. This is an issue that I'm dealing with with my patients every single day. So business recovery and mental health. Jay? The, one of the biggest issues that I see is the lawlessness and the lack of law and order. My brother-in-law is a battalion commander in Milwaukee County, and he has to, like, cheer up his troops every day almost because they look on the news and they're being made like they're the criminal. Now, in every profession, I could say you might have 5% bad apples. Is there 5% bad police? Sure. But that has to change. They need to be respectful. When we had an uh, open Wisconsin rally in the city of Nina, uh, we were there as a little group of us, and two squad cars drove up, and the police chief was there. He talked to me, introduced himself. Very respectful, very nice. He says, we're just here to protect you and what's going on. And when we left, I went and thanked him. But that's an important thing. Like I said, we have statues torn down. That wrenches my stomach. I'm, I'm literally sick about it. It's disgusting. Now with this COVID thing, as well as a crisis, but what's going on in the news media right now? The cases are increasing. The cases are increasing. The cases are increasing. You know why? Because increasing tests are going up. Of course you're going to have increased cases. What you need to watch is hospital admissions or people staying overnight through COVID. And most importantly, hospital deaths. They are dramatically going down. Why is that? Our best health care in the world, as I had mentioned before, and solving the problem. COVID is being solved. It's a type of virus that over time burns itself out. It is on the downslope. But if you continue testing, you're going to work for the governor to have another setup of lockdown. You watch. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is last question and start with Jay what is your plan for safe voting in Wisconsin in November the plan for safe voting in Wisconsin I believe was determined by this uh, the state of Wisconsin Supreme Court uh, when election is set by the um, legislature and election date, it's carried out. Safe voting is just like we're doing uh, safe distancing, wearing a mask if you want. If you don't, it's called freedom. Our founding of our country is freedom. And I know as much uh, about the importance of it and COVID. I come from a family. We have three members right now dealing with COVID patients. My girlfriend's or my uh, daughter's boyfriend is working with COVID as well. So I know that, but it has to be taken care of and we have to do a good job of it. Um, but that's, you know, very important. And I don't have a girlfriend, by the way. I misspoke. <laughs> I, I, my wife hears this, so I'm gonna be in 
trouble. Trouble, Jay. I've been happily married for 26 years, and I have the the gray hair. No, it's white. A white I, hair I to show. I skipped the state. Thank you. Uh, Lori. Again, I would say that I stand for fair and safe elections. And, you know, the stuff that went on in our state was so difficult to be able to cast your vote, which is a primary uh, basis for our democracy. The difficulty that occurred in the last election, a four hour plus wait to cast your ballot is unacceptable. Lost ballots are unacceptable. Ballots that are left at the post office or not delivered are unacceptable. So the good news is our state has put in place great ways for us to safely vote, and we have the choice. We can request an absentee ballot, provided we are a registered voter. We can send that ballot in safely. We can choose to early vote, which is two weeks before the election occurs, or we can vote in person. And while at this point, for our election in August, I don't believe the details are completely confirmed, there will be in-person voting, and people will be able to register the day of the election if they so choose. That's the beauty of our setup. We have the choice. We can vote safely, and our vote can be counted. Rachel? So I worked the polls last cycle, and I was very much impressed um, of the system that they had in place. There weren't four-hour long lines. Um, they had safety precautions. There was social distancing. They had plexiglass and masks. Um, I loved Lori's answer and the fact that there are many different modes that people have out there to, to be able to vote. And if they do come and vote in person, I can say because I was there that it was a wonderful system and I had no concerns for safety at that time for myself or for any of the people that came in and voted. Now on that note though, one thing that did surprise me a little bit was that a lot of people, not a lot, but a handful of people came in and they said, I, I applied for a ballot and it never came to my home. And so then we had to go and take further steps to verify if they had, you know, actually received this, if they had placed their vote, if it really had been mailed out, a lot, a lot, a lot. So in-person voting, definitely an option that I feel is safe. Ballots need to be cleaned up a little bit if that's the route we're going to be going here. Um, but there's many modes that can take place for somebody to, to vote safely. Okay. I just had one addendum for, I had like a little time. Um, the U.S. Attorney, um, William Barr, said something that put a shiver down my spine. And he said he's worried that a foreign government could make counterfeit ballots, buy lists of the registered voters, and send them out in the election. So you at home would get two ballots. You're like, okay, I got two. What am I, which one do I vote? Which one not? And he said that. That is scary. That would cause a calamity. And that's what he said. So. Okay. Um, Rachel, we are uh, now going into the closing. Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I have a comment. Or... Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I would say that systems need to be updated and put in place, which I believe we are working on in Wisconsin, where your ballot can be tracked by mail, so you know where it is. And the other thing is there should be an automatic response. If your ballot's turned in once and a second ballot comes in for you, then there should be an automatic stop to that. Okay. Okay, now it's Rachel's, and um, you will now have the opportunity to give your closing. Thank you. So again, I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I do have to admit that this is the first debate I've ever done, and it's been much more pleasurable than I thought it was going to be coming on in. So thank you for that opportunity. Um, I'm a small business owner. I've been impacted by COVID. I'm working every single day extremely hard, 
with this extremely challenging situation that has come to be here. Um, I'm a nurse, number one trusted profession, voted over and over and over again year after year. I'm very proud of that. I've worked hard to listen, not only to my patients, I've worked very hard as an instructor to listen to my students. I've worked very hard to listen to my small business owners that come to my clinic seeking health care that's affordable for their um, employees and for their families. Um, my passion, my passion is to represent and to care for folks. I have shown this in the simple fact that I have been out here working and learning as fast as I can on all of these subjects that haven't been my core strength. My core strengths have been education. It's been health care. But I have gone out into our community to all these different areas that I've never been exposed to before and have listened, opened up my eyes, and have heard the concerns of the folks in our district. Um, I'm willing to do the best that I can do to represent us, and I think I would be a great candidate to hold that seat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for hosting this. Um, I ask for your vote on August 11th. And the reason is I want to keep Wisconsin what we have. Uh, I was for Donald Trump before it was cool. I went to the Paper Valley in Appleton long before he was elected president. It was in February of 2016. I did the sacrifice I thought. My two sons were there and President or candidate Trump spoke, and I'm like, okay, Jay, do you want a picture with Donald Trump? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. But I thought to myself, one of the things that I should do is give it to my son. So we, he was doing the rope line, and he came, and I said to him the third time, uh, Mr. Trump, could you take a picture with my son? And he said, sure. And he stopped, smiled, and took the picture. That was one of the gifts that I gave to my son, because I knew that he loved the country. And I love Wisconsin, and I'm really concerned the path we're going on. Uh, it's no good. And we need to do faith over fear, calm over chaos. We have our set objective, what we want. A conservative is to keep things the way they were. Yeah, that's right. I'm a conservative. I want to keep the Wisconsin I grew up in. Uh, I ran for the primary two years ago, and I defeated, as I mentioned, my primary opponent like two to one in Winnebago and out of Gamey County. I defeated the Democrat for the Secretary of State in Winnebago County in District 55. If I'm uh, blessed enough to be the candidate for a Republican Assembly in the 55th Assembly District, I am uh, well confident I can defeat him as well because I am the conservative, and I might give you answers you maybe wouldn't want to hear or tell you what maybe you'd like to, but I appreciate you. Lori? Thank you again for hosting us. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's given us a great chance to talk and for everyone to get to know us a little bit better. Um, I am a wonderful fiscal conservative with a proven record as a candidate. I have worked as a coalition builder. I'm the only, only uh, candidate to support education, the investment in education. I've worked with the community to do that. I've listened to the community, and I have learned from them. I've been twice elected, so the community supports me, my actions. I understand health care costs. I've been in the industry, not only for the school board, but my husband is a physician. I understand how to keep costs low, and I agree with Rachel's setup about having a clinic and keeping health care costs low. It's exactly what we've done for our district. I also want to say that I do not answer to special interest. I would be working on behalf of our community to make our community a better place. I love this area. I've raised my family. I have two kids that have graduated from high school and are in college. I have the time and commitment. I have also the experience and the leadership to be a very effective advocate on behalf of our Nina and Fox City's constituents. And I would welcome the opportunity to serve you in Madison. So thank you. 
Thank you to the candidates for attending this forum. We also appreciate the use of the Nina Common Council Chambers facility. If you have not yet registered to vote for the upcoming elections, please go to myvote.wi.gov. This website will give you the most up-to-date information on registering. Also, all three candidates responded to questions on vote411.org. If you want more information, please check vote411.org out. Thank you very much. Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, City Committee meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. Nina residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback.